Our regularly scheduled program will not be seen due to the following special program. For some of you, it's the only game that matters all year long. The Iron Bowl. One of the hottest rivalries in football happens again this weekend. And tonight, we've got the big game covered. Coaches and players, strategy and stats, football fans and tailgaters. Iron Bowl 2003, live from Auburn. Sponsored by Alpha Insurance, Chevrolet, and GMC Trucks. Now, live from Auburn, it's Iron Bowl 2003 with Randy Patrick and Jack Rogers. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to the loveliest village on the plains, Auburn, Alabama. It's time for the 2003 Iron Bowl preview. We're less than 24 hours away from the 68th meeting between the Auburn Tigers and the Alabama Crimson Tide. And it's a pleasure to be uh, reunited with Jack Rogers from WRBL up in Columbus, Georgia. This Iron Bowl preview being seen in uh, coastal Alabama, northwest Florida, and Mississippi, and of course up here in Tiger Country. Exactly, and people looking forward to this. I, I don't think you know how big of a game this is until you actually experience one. Uh, game day last time we were here just incredible you got to be a part of tiger walk down with everything that was going on there and you just got to be a part of this thing to actually know what it's what it's like it's really just something else and it's college football at its best believe me because sports illustrated knows it sports illustrated is here this weekend to uh, share their 50th anniversary so much going on all over campus and of course there's a big football game this year not exactly the type of records you'd like to see i kind of jokingly said uh, when the players say throw out the records in this one they gladly do that this year oh they have they would, of course, and, uh, you know, the favorite is not the one that usually winds up winning this one. The home team, not either. Last four years, it's been the visiting squad that's done that. The last home team to win, 1998, Alabama won when they played in Birmingham. Auburn won here in Auburn the year before that, but it's been a while, and Auburn would like to change that this year. All right, coming up in this hour, you're going to see a lot of familiar faces from years gone by in Auburn football and Alabama football history. We'll also be joined by former Auburn quarterback Damian Craig, and, hey, the party has started. It started a couple of days ago, and our Kimberly Kurth has been having a big time. Let's find out where Kimberly is right now on the Auburn campus. Randy, I don't think I can really call this war because I am having the time of my life out here. The party is going strong. Now tell us, what is Iron Bowl 2003 all about? Oh, Iron Bowl 2003, lots of camaraderie, friendship. Um, we're all out to win and War Eagle. Now, I understand you guys have quite a tradition in your family and involves a big old pig. Yeah, we got us a big old pig, a big 200 pounder. Good old fashioned hog roast. Yeah, it makes a pretty good hog roast. Now tell me, who are you rooting for this weekend? Auburn. Are you excited? Yeah. Iron Bowl 2003s have been so fun so far? Uh huh. Alrighty. Now, I know it's hard to believe, but we have actually found an Alabama fan. Tell us, uh, you're a brave man being in all the, with all these Auburn fans. Yes, I am, but even though it's a bit of robbery, everybody's been really nice, though. It's great. Now, tell us what makes a good party. Uh, a lot of beer. <laughs> and some good barbecue and some good pig. Well, as you can see, these guys are having an absolute great time. Back to you guys, Randy. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you're not going to go uh, hungry this weekend. Some of the friendliest people in the state of Alabama tailgating here. I've had a couple of uh, meals already offered to me and uh, just an awesome experience leading up to the big game. We decided on the way in, we'd stop about a mile up the road where all the tailgaters start and we'd just walk the rest of the way, see if it would be possible to even make it by the time we get up here. There's so much food, it's uh, absolutely incredible. All right, the fun's just getting started. We'll come back and we're going to be checking in with some of the head coaches and players that will be... Uh, well, heading over to Jordan-Hare Stadium in less than 24 hours to uh, suit up and play the big game. We'll be right back with more of our Iron Bowl preview from Auburn in just a moment. The Iron Bowl is uh, quite uh, an exciting deal when I think about it, being from Atlanta, Georgia, then coming to Alabama, all of a sudden you're being a part of the Iron Bowl. Wow, what a game. So uh, we look forward to taking care of the tie this year. You know, it's bragging rights for the next 365 days, and... Um, It'll be the biggest game for us of the season. You know, if we can win this football game, it'll kind of help the season out, you know, especially with the problems that we've been through.
Hey, boy. Henry, come in. You think your neighbor's new dog is friendly? Henry, come in. Go. Oh, oh, Henry, good dog. Good you dog. ought to get to know an Alpha insurance agent. Henry, okay, good dog. Good. Call Alpha. Fast, fair service, friendly people. Good dog, Henry. Good dog. With things the way they are, my sixth graders are thinking about energy these days. Asking good questions. I tell them we're lucky we're part of an electric co-op. Our local co-op gives us more than reliable electricity. There's safety demonstrations, energy conservation ideas. That's how the people have the power. Road to you by your local Touchstone Energy Cooperatives, Alabama and Florida. How low can you go for the price of your Thanksgiving turkey? How about free? I'm free! At Winn-Dixie between now and November 27th, use your customer reward card with a minimum purchase of $75 and you'll get one WD frozen turkey free! Yes, I'm free! Or with a minimum purchase of $35 in your customer reward card, get the same turkey for 47 cents a pound. Hurry down to your neighborhood Winn-Dixie and bring home the big star of your Thanksgiving dinner for free! Yes, I'm free! Now that's not just talking turkey. Real good food from real good people at a real good price. Winn-Dixie, the real deal. Foley Implement on Highway 59 now offers Baldwin County's largest selection of die-cast collectible John Deere models and toys. Tractors, combines, or trucks, no matter what you collect, you'll find no better selection in Baldwin County. Stop by and see us. Foley Implement, much more than a tractor store. It's Sponta Manufacturer's Bell Ringer Sale. Surprise her with her very own tanning bed for only $30 per month. Sponta Manufacturer's Chickasaw and Gaucher. When news happens, Chopper 5 is there. News 5, your weather authority. Iron Bowl 2003. Now, live from Auburn, Randy Patrick and Jack Rogers. Well, it was an absolutely beautiful day here in Auburn, and it's a beautiful night as well, and lots of traffic and lots of fun. And tell you what, we're going to have some fun with a former Auburn quarterback, Damian Craig, number 16, joining us here at Jordan Harris Stadium. And Tell you, this is uh, no strange place to you. You spent a lot of uh, good times here, didn't you, Damian? Had a lot of great times here. I'm glad to be back. This is my second home, and I'm glad you invited me up to get a little coverage on the game. Well, of course, uh, we're going to talk about what your feelings are on the big game, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people, we've seen fans see you and ask you what you've been up to. Uh, you had a little taste of the NFL after your college career and uh, winning the SEC West back in 97. Yes, sir. I've been out, uh, played four years for the Carolina Panthers, and now I'm back home uh, coaching at my old high school, and I'm glad to be back. A lot of fun memories here. Um, I remember the fourth and ten, Patrick Nix throwing the ball to Frank Sanders for the touchdown. I also remember Sism fumbling the ball and giving us a chance to win that game back in 97. Oh, that's a bad highlight right there. That was the interception. But, uh, <laughs> sack? What's going on? <laughs> okay, you know, but <laughs> there were so many more Alabama good, highlights. <laughs> so many more good things that happened for you while you were here. And we've talked about how this is a big game to everybody that lives uh, in the state of Alabama, those in uh, West Georgia that follow this as well. But we don't know what it's like to actually suit up and be part of that. Tell us what that's like. I remember my last game, I, I actually kissed the ground, and it was my last time playing there. So. It's very emotional. Growing up as a kid, I always watch Randy um, do these segments, and I always dreamed about playing in the Auburn, Alabama game. I, was, I think I was nine or 10 years old when I decided I wanted to be an Auburn quarterback, and it was just a dream come true, and I took everything in, and I'm, I'm still enjoying it, and I just can't believe it. That first day back on the field, your first game, the first time you suited up against Alabama, what goes through somebody's head when that happens? It, it, it had been a dream for such a long time, so what do you think as you walk on that field for the first time? Well, my first game suiting up, I was, uh, Red shirt freshman, and uh, I wasn't dressing out that year, but Coach Fisher wanted me to uh, take everything in, so he gave me a chance to dress out. And I remember Tiger Walk walking down the street and seeing people in the, in the trees and, and uh, hanging out of the trees. And before the game started, half the stadium was full, so I knew it was a big game then, and, and I, I was just excited about it. And it was good that we can come out on top that year. Well, I can remember when Pat Dye met, met with you in the locker room after the SEC championship game and told you and gave you a big hug and said that you meant more to Auburn football and more than most of the players that suited up here, and that had to be quite a compliment coming from Coach Dye. You, you're right. I'm, I was always um, humble about being an Auburn Tiger, and I, I never would put my, myself in the same breath as Bo Jackson, some of those guys, and for Coach Dye to say something to me like, like that meant a lot to me, so I felt pretty good about it, and um, I guess I, I, I can take my place in Auburn history now. Well, Jack, you know, you talk about uh, the coaching staffs at Auburn, and we talked about Pat Dye, and of course, uh, Damian played for Terry Bowden, Tommy Tuberville, and uh, he's two and two in this game. He told me he's not uh, 
really pleased with being two and two against Alabama and uh, neither are some of the Auburn uh, faithful and uh, could be a big game for Tommy Tuberville. It could be a, it could be a very big game for Tommy Tuberville. Rumors have been flying and they always do when somebody gets to the point of the season where they are now in this uh, particular ball game when the records aren't where you'd want it to be. Rumors are already starting to fly. Will he be next, here next year especially if Auburn does not do well against Alabama tomorrow but we had a chance to sit down and uh, talk with the Auburn coach uh, earlier this week to get his thoughts on the game. WRBL's Dan Edward had the privilege of doing that. First things first, Auburn head coach Tommy Tuberville will continue to be just that, Auburn head coach, regardless of the Iron Bowl's outcome. I will be the coach here next year. Looking forward to it. After all, the Tigers did have a nice run from mid-September to mid-October of five straight wins. We, we look at the positives of, of how things have gone, and you know, the number one thing is we, we beat a team, Arkansas, on the road, which we hadn't done in a long time. And at that time, they were ranked number seven in the country. And then, then one week, we beat Tennessee, and they're ranked number seven in the country. We beat them here, and we hadn't beat them in a long time. Uh, so, you know, th there have been some good, good points. The negatives, early losses to Southern Cal and Georgia Tech, more recent blowouts from LSU and Georgia, plus the heartbreaker against Ole Miss. All that would hurt a little less with a win over Bama. You know, no matter whether you won or lost during the regular season, actually, and, and when you look back at both teams, it hadn't been a, uh, a banner year for either one of us when it comes to wins and losses. But you get to the last one and play this one, you know, when you can say you have bragging rights, it, it, it sometimes it, it washes away a lot of bad memories, you know, for, for a small amount of time. And, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we, we uh, get through this game with a positive note and then go to our bowl game and, and it end it on a great note. With the Tigers in Auburn, I'm Dan Edward. All right, Damian Craig, uh, you know what it's like to play for a coach that may be on the hot seat. Uh, is Tommy Tuberville on the hot seat, in your opinion? What do you think the players are thinking tonight? I think he's definitely on the hot seat. Um, I remember I was in Carolina, played for a coach named George Seifert, won about five Super Bowls, and we were going through a bad season. I can remember towards the end of the year, if we were won a couple more games he would have kept his job but we lost him and um, I actually saw guys lay down they didn't want to win they didn't want the guy back so that, that has to go through some of the guys mind I know it's a distraction to some of the guys it's some this is his first recruiting class some of these guys got red shirted so it'll be interesting to see how they come out and play for him tomorrow night so you think that maybe the, the, the players may feel the burden that they're trying to win the game not just for Iron Bowl pride but to keep Tuberville around it's around and also has a big implication on recruiting because if you got a young guy there recruiting right now, he doesn't know if Coach Tuberville is going to be back. So they have to make some decisions between now and January whether or not he's going to be back. This decision probably is already made, but it's not public. Is that fair, though, from a, from a player's standpoint? That's an awful lot of pressure, knowing that you've got a big game as it is already, to have to carry the weight of playing for the possible job security of your coach to take that on the field with you. Well, you're supposed to play for your coach every week. Um, I think that's something that they hadn't been doing. I, I wish they would have played harder for that coach. and. Uh, you got to love the guy you're playing for. You got to be willing to put 100% on the line for him. And I don't think everybody's done that this year. And I think that's part of the problem. Um, looking at the game as a fan, you wonder why the guy's not playing with a, um, a maximum effort. And um, a lot of people can point at the coach. But I think he's done an outstanding job this year. He's a, a great recruiter. And we just can't put our finger on what's going on. But hopefully um, tomorrow night we can start over and, and um, get ready for the bowl game and for next year. All yeah. right, Alabama fans, I was going to say, aren't happy either, Jack and Damian, because the Crimson Tide comes in at 4-7 and seven under their first-year head coach, Mike Shula played in this game three times he's getting ready to coach in his first game and we're going to hear what coach Mike Shula has to say about this big week for the Alabama faithful when we come back with more of our Iron Bowl preview from Jordan Hare Stadium stay tuned Iron Bowl 2003 now live from Auburn Randy Patrick and Jack Rogers tackles cheerleaders fans refs Everything you love and love to hate about SEC football is on News 5. It's your ticket to the game. Watch your favorite SEC college football teams battle it out this Saturday. Don't miss it. News 5 SEC football coverage is brought to you by Palmer's Airport Toyota, Alpha Insurance, Domino's Pizza, GMC, Best Talk, the ultimate phone book, and Dodge. Professional football is back in both Alan Turner locations, Alan Turner Automotive, and the used car capital are celebrating with a now-for-less sale. We're tackling high prices in September, and you're the winner with our best 
selection of new Hyundais, over 300 late model pre-owned cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs, priced to save you thousands. Along with huge savings, when you buy any vehicle this month, you get a personalized pro football jersey of your choice with your name on it. The Now for Less sale going on now at both Allen Turner locations, Allen Turner Automotive, and the used car capital in Car City. Remember when you were congested as a kid and the soothing feeling of warm, mentholated vapors? Well, now you can take those vapors wherever you go with new Vapor Shot, the personal vaporizer from Breathe Right. Just add one tablet to hot tap water and inhale. Wow. Penetrating mentholated vapors help you feel better immediately. And for nighttime congestion, try Breathe Right Vapor Strips. Ooh, mentholated. Mmm. New Vapor Shot and mentholated vapor strips. Breathe better, feel better <sighs> with Breathe Right. J&J Furniture is holiday headquarters for all your furniture and accessory needs. Our five convenient showrooms are overflowing with the latest and brightest styles from not one, but all your favorite brand names at the Gulf Coast guaranteed lowest price. Add to that a truckload sale of our famous Restonic bedding, our own financing, 14 months interest free, and you've got one incredible holiday sale. Come see us, J&J Furniture, where our family has been serving yours for over 36 years. And the Auburn University campus has come alive for Iron Bowl 2003. It's the 68th meeting between the two teams. And welcome back. I'm Randy Patrick. Well, you know, Mike Shula really had been looking forward to this game all season long with uh, hopes of maybe coming into Jordan Harris Stadium with double digit victories, but that didn't happen. A disappointing four and seven season for the Crimson Tide. And his job is safe, but maybe some of the assistants on Coach Shula's uh, staff may be in jeopardy at the end of the season after uh, this weekend's game and the trip to Hawaii. But still, Coach Shula remains uh, to stay upbeat and positive about this disappointing season. When Mike Shula played quarterback at Alabama in the mid-80s, many people thought then that he'd end up a head coach one day. He did at his alma mater. First of all, I just want to say I can't say enough about, about the players that are here right now. Um, obviously, under some difficult circumstances, after his playing days ended, Shula spent the next 15 years serving as an assistant coach for three NFL teams. When he took over the Crimson Tide program, following the Mike Price embarrassment, Shula knew it wouldn't be easy. Good call. Bama's 4-7 and seven on the season and 0-4 against ranked teams and seven-point underdogs heading into Saturday night's Iron Bowl. Speaking for Alabama, none of us wanted to you know, be where we are right now. Um, and yet, uh, I think we've got some things to hang our hat on. Shula knows brighter days are ahead for the program, and the players who've produced this subpar season feel the coach's pain. People may look and say, you know, hey, they're four and seven. I told you he couldn't coach, but you know, you got to look at the situation. Coach Shula came into it wasn't a good one, and uh, he, he he's made the most of it, and uh, he he's made the the most out of it that, that it could possibly be in the situation he came into, and you know, I have nothing but the utmost respect for Coach Shula just for him stepping up and saying, hey, I'll be the one to, to take over the leadership role of those guys and, and try to get that program back on track. Does it disturb you as a head coach that uh, the alibi is that short season and, and it's basically everybody around the state saying it's a free pass, so just forget about it? Yeah, I mean, I, everyone says, well, we have patience. I don't have patience, you know. I, you know, we're not gonna, we've never made an excuse um, and, and we, and nor will we ever in the future. Um, you know, we're about, when you come to Alabama, you expect to win football games every time you take the field. Uh, and when you don't, you've fallen short of, of what your goal is and your expectation. And there's always great expectations for the Crimson Tide of Alabama, but chronicling what has happened in the past few years, uh, you really could write a, a book about what's happened at Alabama, and it's still ongoing. You, you could, but I think they're headed definitely in the right direction. They had talked uh, in the last couple of coaching changes about wanting to stay in the Alabama family when they found that guy for the top job, and they've gone back and done that. They've got Mike Shula back, and I think he's a guy that's really got his head on straight, that knows where he wants to go with this program, and he's still young enough to where he can relate to the players. He knows what it was like. He can, uh, he can relate what he's learned, the information, the knowledge, and give it to the guys that he's working with maybe they can take that learn something from it hey he's Don Shula's son he learned a lot growing up had 15 years of NFL uh, coaching experience and and now after this season's over we're going to see what kind of recruiter he is and from what we hear 
it sounds like he's going to be pretty well received with mom and pop when he uh, enters the, the homes of some of these recruits. Well, you know, the probation thing is over when this season is done. So the recruits are now starting to look heavily at Alabama because they can do the postseason thing. No more uh, just because game in Hawaii anymore. They've got definitely a chance to go to a bowl game, and that's something that they're really, really looking forward to. We have uh, plenty more coming up here from the loveliest village on the plains. Tailgating still going on even at this hour. The barbecue smoke still filling the air and smells absolutely wonderful. We've got more on the tailgating and a whole bunch more for you from the shadows of Jordan-Hare Stadium as our Iron Bowl preview special continues. Oh, look at that. When the world's just waking up, I'm already out on the road. There's the Beckers. Our kids play ball together. That's the new industrial park we just built lines into. If you work for a local electric co-op, you're part of the community, just like everybody else. You make every customer feel like they own the business you work for. Because in an electric co-op, they do. Road to you by your local Touchstone Energy Cooperatives for Alabama and Florida. Hello, I'm Jerry McCutcheon, and this is my wife, Debbie. Did you know that women also need to understand investing? After all, one out of three women work. With so many dual incomes, women should also have an investment plan, so let us show you how to invest wisely for your children and your retirement. Call the McCutcheon Company and ask for our special investment planning guide just for women. The McCutcheon Company can help you retire with dignity. The McCutcheon Company. Are you getting enough fiber in your diet? If you ate as much food as it takes to get the 25 to 30 grams of daily fiber recommended by the Surgeon General, what else would you have time for? That's why there's Fiber Choice, the chewable fiber supplement with four grams of fiber in each dose. That's four times the amount you get from fiber caplets. To get the fiber you need, make the smart choice. Fiber Choice. We are proud to invite you to the grand opening of our beautiful new home for Acura. Beautiful new facilities and exciting new Acuras for 2004. Like the popular all-new TL priced from just $32,650 and the redesigned award-winning MDX for around $36,000. We want to invite everyone from South Alabama, South Mississippi, and Pensacola to come see all the new Acuras during our grand opening. Get to know our Acura family, people who genuinely care and want to provide personal service from the heart. turn into kind of a pride bowl rather than a so-called iron bowl, but that's okay. I mean, there, there are years that neither team is going to be in contention uh, for the SEC championship or a national championship, but that's all right. They're still going to go out there and wear red and white and blue and orange, and it'll take no less away from it. Uh, you can come in that game 1-0 and or come in that 10-0. and The record's going out. The, you're going to have to throw the records out because that game, is, it's, it's just like starting the season over. You go in there, head button, and, and, and you hope to come out on top. We're about uh, 23, 22 hours away from kickoff the uh, Iron Bowl 2003. Auburn, Alabama getting set up to play in this place behind us here. 85,000 screaming fans and who knows how many more outside. Welcome back. We've got plenty more to talk about in this uh, 40 or so minutes we have left to go over what's going on this weekend here in Auburn. Well, this is one of those uh, arrive early and stay late weekends here. It's not a very big town, but it becomes a huge city during the weekend of the game. and. Kimberly Kurth has been here for a couple of days and had a chance to get a bird's eye view of all the folks that uh, do arrive early and set up and uh, come prepared. Kimberly? The party is going strong. We've got some excited fans here. We've got some excited fans here. have been waiting for this weekend all year long. Can you guys believe it's actually here? No, it sure rolls around quick. Now, let me, let me know, are you guys having a good time? We sure are. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, tell me, I understand you guys have a really long-standing tradition with your family and it involves a big old pig. We do. In fact, when uh, Les and I got married 33 years ago, we celebrated our, we celebrated our marriage with the hog roast. So it's kind of been going on and on ever since and growing, and our family is growing. Now, I understand this is really the highlight of the tailgate. What really makes a good tailgate, Lester? Well, nothing's better than a big old hog and having all your friends up here and eating and whatever. 
And I understand you guys got some oysters and some sausage, and y'all having a great time. We are, we are. Uh, we'd like to have you uh, taste some oysters after a while. <laughs> well, I might have to take you up on that after. Well, we want you guys to have a great time, and thanks for letting us be oh, a part of your eagle. tailgate. More eagle. Back to you guys. All right, thanks very much, Kimberly. And uh, we had a chance to visit Damien and I earlier with some folks from Clanton, Alabama, and they fed us some uh, really spiced up shrimp. And uh, people, they blow their budget this weekend. You know, we were absolutely just impressed with the num not only the number of grills, but the types that come in. It, it takes trailers and big truckloads to bring in just the grills to cook the food on these uh, uh, these campers and, and the tailgaters. And uh, it's, you got to come prepared. There's no two ways about it. All right, Alabama fans hopefully will come prepared this weekend. We hadn't seen a lot of Alabama fans. You think that four and seven records keeping them? Uh out of here until Saturday? Absolutely not. They are they are here, I'm sure of, and will be here even in full force tomorrow. All right. Uh, well, we're going to remember former Auburn play-by-play -play announcer Jim Fife when we return with more of our 2003 Iron Bowl preview from the Auburn campus. But first, this time out. Hi, folks. Hope you have a great night. Dan Walton here at the all-new Mark Dodge Mobile. Where, how about this? We've taken all of our most popular new Dodges, including Dodge Ram Quad Cab, marked them all the same, $6,000 off. We're the new Mark Dodge. Hey, we rock. Come on, man. You're a rocket. Yeah. You're a cheetah. Wow. You're an alpha insurance agent. Coach. <laughs> Alpha's response to your needs is so fast, it can be downright inspirational. Call Alpha. Fast, fair service. That's fast. Friendly people. <laughs> Attention, Pensacola residents. Alan Turner Automotive and his used car capital present a used vehicle sale of such proportions it can only be described in one way. Big! It's the $3 million used vehicle fall frenzy. This Friday and Saturday only, you'll find row after row, line after line, hundreds of top quality pre-owned vehicles, cars starting at just $9.95, payments from as low as $99 a month. Wait, there's more. Buy one of a select group of used vehicles and get a second one for just $99. Plus, Rick's Ribs, music, and more. Don't miss it. Friday and Saturday only at Alan Turner Automotive and his used car capital in Car City. Happy holidays. Thank you. It's just what I wanted. Hang on, I got some for you. Oh. Thanks. This week at Bell's, it's the Wrap It Up Early Sale, where you can save big and wrap up your holiday shopping early with free gift wrapping. We'll be ready, will you? Hey, look, Ford and Chevy make good trucks. As long as you got a second job, <laughs> Dodge better shop with us. Hi, folks, I'm Dan Walters here at the new Mark Dodge Mobile, where right now every new Dodge Ram truck in our giant inventory, $6,000 off. We're the new Mark Dodge. You come and see us. Out of the eye, going to pitch to... Jesse, and he's going to give it to Tillman on the end of the round. The 10, the 5, Tillman. He's in! Touchdown, Auburn! Touchdown, Auburn! Are you Tillman on the end of the round? Reverse! 32 seconds left. Auburn has gone ahead 20 to 17. And welcome back to Auburn. Alabama, and I'll tell you what, the voice of the Tigers for so many years missing this year, and the unfortunate and timely death of Jim Fife uh, back in the offseason. And I had the uh, privilege and pleasure of working with Jim Fife in the booth with the Alabama Mississippi All Star game for about 10 years. And I tell you, he was indeed a legend here in Auburn. He was. Being able, uh, a lifelong resident of this area, being able to tune in the radio and listen to that touchdown Auburn cry uh, on a Saturday afternoon, uh, that was part of what you wanted to hear. You'd like to keep up with the football team, the game itself, but just to be able to hear Jim describe things the way he did. He could paint a picture like not many others could. Uh, I also had the privilege of working with Jim when uh, he was in Columbus uh, during the uh, indoor football league season. He was the play-by-play uh, -play announcer for the team in Columbus and had a chance 
chance to get to know him there and get to work with him as well. There are several here that wish it could be different, that Jim Fife could be here to call the Iron Bowl again. It just wouldn't seem like it's the Iron Bowl without him. But uh, there are several here that still remember, in spite as life goes on, we had a chance to look back at Jim Fife. Inside the Bama two for a second down play. Joseph goes up and over. Joseph is in. Touchdown. Jim's legacy on air will be just just the great calls. Uh, he has, I mean, for me, I, I listened to him growing up. Hollingsworth out of the shotgun is going to throw long, looking for Sanderson. Knocked down and intercepted. Intercepted Get by Wallace. Dennis Wallace. And this one, my friends, is history. Uh, he's the voice that I remember, and that's the voice that I associate with Auburn football. And that's the way it is for for many for many decades or many generations, I guess, uh, young and old alike. It's going to be Williams. Williams slices in there, spins. Is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Auburn! In terms of what kind of legacy Jim left, it, it's just all the uh, tremendous calls that he had for football and basketball and. And any, any great Auburn play, I don't think of the TV broadcast, I think of the radio broadcast and, and what Jim said at that moment. There's a snap, the spot, kick is away, long enough, high enough, kick, good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good, it's good. Jim Fife always said this was a dream job, and uh, it is. And I, it's unfortunate the situation in which I entered this role as, as an Auburn broadcaster. I mean, this will be the first time in 22 years that someone different has called an Auburn football game. So it will be, uh, it will be a, an unusual time. It will be a very nervous time for me. 57-yard try. Josh puts it down. He kicks it. It is going to be short. It's no good. Ball game is over. Ladies and gentlemen, the Auburn Tigers are going to the SEC championship game. Hail to the champions of the SEC Western Division. The Auburn Tigers, 18. The Crimson Tide, 17, hang a star next to Jared Holmes' name. Jared Holmes has given Auburn. And I'm sure the uh, Alabama faithful really don't like to hear that touchdown, Auburn. And uh, Damian Craig on the receiving end of a number of those calls. And we saw some video there with you in it. Uh, what did Jim Fife mean to the players uh, as far as his play-by-play -play style? He meant a lot to, to the players in the game. And I'm, I'm getting chills right now just listening to him. And um, he was more well known than the coaches around here. And Pat died, uh, Coach Bowden. You heard about Jim Fife before you even got here. So um, he, it's a, it's a sad, sad blow to the um, Auburn family. He will be missed. Um, and uh, this is his first game without him. And you know we're going to miss him. Tell me what it's like knowing that a guy like Jim Fife was there for so long. What a radio guy means to a football team. There are so many people that, that come to games, but so many more that can't make it to a game. What do these guys do for a football program? I think a team gets his identity from the radio guy. Um, like all of those highlights, you, you can all, always remember what he said. Um, you're always going to play his, um, the highlights from him talking about it and associated with the play. So, you know, um, Georgia had that guy and Alabama had that guy. And, uh, we just lost ours, but we, um, Stan White is doing a good job, and we have a new guy this year. And yeah, I've been listening to the games on the radio, and it's a lot different. So I'm, I'm trying to get used to it myself. How bizarre was it with Auburn starting out with Jim Fife in the booth and going four quarters, eight quarters, I think it was ten quarters before you ever heard touchdown Auburn? That was kind of <laughs> strange, wasn't it? Well, it didn't happen too often when um, when I was here. We hopefully didn't have to wait eight quarters to get a touchdown, but I'm sure this year he would have been pretty upset because uh, he, he wouldn't have had a chance to say it a lot unless we were playing Western Kentucky or somebody. So um, hopefully, you know, we were grooming a new guy and, and everything's moving along. All right. I'll tell you what, when we look ahead to the game, if Jim Fife was in the booth, he'd have a fun time calling uh, the runs by the Williamses. Uh, we've got Carnell Williams and Shad Williams in this game. And when we come back from Auburn, we're going to take a look at this dy dynamic duo who will be, uh, well, running the football Saturday night for the SEC rushing title. That when we come back.
tonight on WKRG News 5. He spent his life helping others. When he needed help, someone was there for him. Tonight at 10, we'll take you to a special homecoming you don't want to miss. And high school football playoffs are heating up. Scores and highlights of round three on Sideline 2003. And with clear skies, we're looking for patchy fog overnight tonight, but a great weekend forecast. That's at 10 on News 5, your weather authority. Keith Palmer for Palmer's Toyota Superstore. We're running for the record. 2,000 Toyotas must be sold in 2003. Palmer's can make it happen. We need your trade-in, though. Bring it in. Get our best possible deal. Now is the best time to buy. Plus, at Palmer's Toyota Superstore, the 04s are rolling in at 03 prices. As always, lower taxes, free tires for life, and no payments till next year. See why we're Mobile's number one Toyota dealer. Palmer's Toyota Superstore. You got to see this place. Here we go again. It's back. Auto loan rates as low as 4.25% APR plus $200 rebate. Pen Air can make your car look even better. Sporty or conservative, new or used, no matter what kind of look you want in a vehicle, you'll love Pen Air Federal Credit Union's auto loan rates. Great rates, great loans, easy pre-approval, and $200 cash. You just can't look any better than that. Stop by, call, or email Pen Air today and find out why we say we get it done. Cadillac is on the most impressive roll in its 100-year history, and we at Joe Bullard Cadillac are proud to be part of it. I promise to be back with more good news from Cadillac, and here's some of it. The original Escalade SUV and the popular EXT now includes a big brother, the Escalade ESV, the world's most powerful full-size sport utility. GM incentives are at an absolute all-time record high, making it easier than ever to drive a new Cadillac. Oh, by the way, here's a little glimpse of something else coming from Cadillac in the next few months. Stay tuned for more. You know, it's not often that the lights go on and the parties start, but they have started here. They always do on football weekends here in the loveliest village on the plains. But this is not just any football weekend. This is the Iron Bowl weekend between Auburn and Alabama. And there's a bunch of uh, excitement going on outside the stadium even at this hour. Kimberly Garth is uh, outside in and around the stadium and uh, has more from the tailgate parties going on. Kimberly? Got both here tonight on Auburn's campus. Now I understand you're a big Auburn fan. War Eagle. Tell us uh, what's your favorite part about Iron Bowl 2003? The people, of course. Looks like you guys are having a pretty good time out here. Great time. Great. Now, have y'all been doing lots of tailgating? All year long. <laughs> now I understand one of your best friends is an Alabama fan. How does that happen? It's hard to deal with, isn't it? but we handle it. We get along great. It's fun. Now, uh, you're the Roll Tide fan. Uh, yeah, woo! Roll Tide! What's your favorite part about Iron Bowl 2003? Just the competition. I love it. It's a good game. Woo! I understand we got some little guys here. What's your favorite part about Iron Bowl 2003? Are you an Auburn fan or are you an Alabama fan? Auburn. You like Auburn? Yeah, come on. I think. What's the battle cry? I think. Oh, oh, no. No. I think I heard a war eagle there. How about you? Who's your team? War eagle. Now, what, what are you guys going to be doing tonight? Y'all having fun? All right. Now, do we have any predictions for tomorrow? What's your prediction? It's going to be a close game. That's all I'm going to say. War eagle. Are we roll tied? <laughs> Woo! Roll tied. Everybody's getting along and having a great time. Back to you guys. All right, thanks very much, Kimberly. A little confusing on who to cheer for for some, huh? Hey, you don't often see an Alabama fan and Auburn fan hug the weekend of the football game. <laughs> well, if you're going to cheer for the Williams, uh, which one is it going to be? Carnell Cadillac Williams or Shawd Williams for the Alabama Crimson Tide? Two outstanding running backs at uh, both are running 1-2 now in the uh, lead for the rushing title in the Southeastern Conference. And let's take a look at the two guys that uh, may end up deciding the outcome of this game Saturday night. For the end zone. Bragging rights are on the line, but so too is the Southeastern Conference rushing title. In this corner, wearing crimson and white, Sean Williams from Andrews, Texas. In the orange and blue corner, from Atala, Alabama, Carnell Cadillac Williams. 
Williams and Williams, the only two 1,000 yard rushers so far this season in the SEC. I want to say he amazes me at some of the things he, he's done, but then again, he, he, I, I'm not too amazed just because uh, I seen what he could do last year. He's a real quick bat. Uh, got got real good vision, and you know he, he's a threat to take it the distance every time he touched the ball. This could be a deciding factor in the who wins a rushing title for this year too. Shaud leads the conference in rushing with 1,169 yards. Cadillac is 134 behind at 1,035. The duo has combined to score 27 touchdowns this season. He, he's done, done a great job. Uh, I mean, he, he's a real good back. Uh, you know, the most important thing th this weekend for me is for us to go out and get a victory. Uh, you know, like, like, like I said earlier, you know, if he rushed for 200, I'll rush for 50. If we win, you know, I'll still be just as happy. The balls kind of started out kind of kind of hot, and then, uh, you know, uh, things just kind of went south for the both of us. And, uh, you know, it's just kind of one of those things. Like you say, they were, they were a little bit of Heisman talk for the both of us, and, you know, things just kind of derailed, like you said. and. Uh, I think we both uh, have gone through some tough losses, and uh, and I think both teams uh, have probably lost some games that you know uh, they feel they should have won. While their stats are close, their styles running the football a bit different. Cadillac, he, he's a clean important. You know, he, he can make you miss, and don't sleep on his power because he'll run you over too. And Rashad, Rashad is a Barry Sanders. Because he'll shake you. He ain't going to run you over. But he, he'll shake you and make you miss. Very similar to Carnell of how he runs. He's very strong and, you know, from, from the waist down, catches the ball well, blocks well. Uh, I, I, I don't think any doubt two, two best running backs in the league. Bama seems to go as Shawd goes. Likewise for Auburn and Cadillac Williams. Look for one of these heavyweights to throw the knockout punch late in the game. I think both of them mean uh, probably the same amount to each football team. I know Shad means the uh, world to us, and we've got to get Shad going. And, and um, where he's playing, uh, you know, giving him some space to make some runs, or and he'll get the tough yards inside if he has to too. And, and I know there Williams is a guy that is extremely dangerous. You know, he can he can get it in the end zone faster than anybody I think I've ever seen. All right, you get out that chessboard, and you draw up a game plan for Saturday night's game, and you say, do you run it, establish the run, both teams, or do you use that to fake them out and then throw deep? What would you do? I can tell you one thing. Um, I bet you Auburn's going to run the ball after two, two first, um, first half carries from um, Carnell Williams last week. A lot of people upset, and also Carnell's upset. It's going to be a deciding factor whether or not he come back next year. So I think he's got to get a lot of touches. I'm thinking he need to get 20 touches in the first half, whether he's running the ball or catching the ball. Jason Campbell seems to be drawing a little bit of criticism this season, a guy that just, just doesn't seem to be able to, to win the big games. Auburn one and three against uh, top ten opponents this year. Uh, what do you think's uh, holding Jason back from uh, coming out in his junior season? Well, I think it's um, multiple um, offense coordinators. Uh, you can't get comfortable. Every year he has a different guy. So um, a quarterback can't, can't become a leader if he's out there learning on, on the job. So. I think next year, um, where well, it's going to be a different coordinator next year, probably. So it's going to be back to the drawing board for him. So it's just been tough for him, a tough four years for him. And I kind of feel sorry for him, but I had the luxury of having the same guy for five years. I've been in the same offense for five years. You know, we talked about the Williamses and the impact that they could have on this game. But Sean's got a little bit of a uh, maybe a stumbling block there with a the front seven that Auburn puts on the field defensively, probably as good as any in the conference. Most definitely. Um, Auburn's going to come out and try to stop the run first. But uh, Brody Crowley has a strong arm. He's able to get the ball downfield. I expect Alabama to maybe try to stretch the field a little bit with their receivers and maybe use shot in the passing game a little bit more with some screens and, and giving it to them out the backfield to keep the defense off balance. So I think they, they have the upper edge as far as that. They can um, utilize their running back in the passing game a little bit more than what we can. Do you think they do that early because that Auburn's been shown to, to have that little bit of a weakness in the defensive uh, backfield? Do you go to the air first and try to set everything up then and exploit that weakness? I think you go to the air, but you got to get shot the ball. Like I said, give them some screens early in the game. Um, they'll be fired up. They'll be coming off the ball and also flare them out the backfield and, and get them out there one-on-one -on -one with some linebackers. You know, you go back to the beginning of the season, all the 
the hoopla about the four backs, uh, you know, Carnell Williams, uh, Ronnie Brown, uh, Brandon Jacobs, and Trey Smith, and you really wonder what happened. Why didn't this running game get on track during the season? Too much depth? Is, is that a curse, you think? I don't think it was the depth. I think the offensive line got off to a very, very slow start. Um, we had the running backs, but it, the problem was with the offensive line. I don't know if we had new guys. I think everybody was returning. We probably had some injuries at the beginning of the year, but they didn't play up to their potential. And um, you can't do anything with the offensive line. You can't throw the ball. You can't run the ball. And I think that was a problem early on. How do you keep these guys when you got four like that? How do you keep them all happy? If the offensive line gets off to a good start, you got four guys that could be a number one running back on any team in this country, uh, fighting for playing time. I think I, I, I got an idea how to keep them happy. You bring back Coach Dow, offense coordinator, when Bo Jackson was here. <laughs> Start back running the wishbone. Um, I, I think that would have been a good idea this year. You got to get all of them the ball. You can keep them off balance. I know this day and age. Um, a lot of people are going away from it, the option game, but when you got three talented backs like that, any one of them can take the distance at any time. All right, former Auburn quarterback Damian Craig telling it like it is. That's why we invited him on this show tonight, because we knew he would tell it like it is. All right, we're going to take a break. We'll come back with more of the fun from Auburn University. Hey, speaking of the fun, folks, when they pack up to come here for the weekend, they bring all the food and uh, liquid refreshments and the, uh, the family pets as well. <laughs> take a look at this as uh, the dogs are getting into the act. <laughs> Say it with me, simple is better. Right now at the new Mark Dodge Mobile, every caravan, every Ram pickup, every Durango, priced the same, $6,000 off, folks. We are the all-new Mark Dodge, and we rock. Need a good reason to save? It's McRae's Charity Sale. This Saturday from 6 to 11 a.m., you'll save big on items that rarely or never go on sale, including brands so famous we can't even mention their names. Profit Benefit Sale is an exclusive shopping event for ticket holders only. Buy a $5 ticket at the door and local charities benefit from all ticket proceeds. Plus, register to win great prizes. The Praise Charity Sale, this Saturday, the sale that's focused on you and our community. This is where I play baseball. This is our family business. This is our family's farm. Daddy says it's nicer now than when he played. Now we've got lights for night games. We have to make sure that everything runs just right. Our electric co-op helps us manage our power usage. I have the power. I have the power. I have the power. Road to you by your local Touchstone Energy Cooperatives, Alabama and Florida. The folks at Baldwin EMC don't just work in Baldwin County, they live in Baldwin County like you. And because their focus is on providing unsurpassed value and customer satisfaction, they've kept rates among the lowest in the country. And that results in 98% customer satisfaction. At Baldwin EMC, they're just good neighbors like you. Baldwin EMC is your electric cooperative. Shine as one. And you know what? When mom's not happy, nobody's happy. That's why right now, brand new Dodge Caravans are $6,000 off. Hey, no wonder we're number one. We're the new Mark Dodge Mobile. You come and see us. To play in the Auburn-Alabama game, there's actually nothing like it. I mean, it's the biggest uh, and best football, college football rivalry, I think, in the nation. Um, and, and we'll talk about it in just a second. But I think when you get to the point of the last ball game of the season, um, you throw records out of the, out of the, out of the way, and, uh, and you, you want to you hit somebody as hard as you can. The season does mean something, but in this game, it's kind of uh, uh, played down a little bit because the rivalry is just so big, and that win means so much to the fans and to the players alike. And welcome back to our Iron Bowl preview. And I'll tell you, you know, you look at some of these guys that, uh, you know, have played like Damian through the years, and just, you know, the great names and great players, just one after the other from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and and even you can go back uh, even earlier years. So uh, this game has produced uh, 
some household names uh, because of the play. It has, and it's funny that when you go back and talk to some of these about their playing days, the games that they remember are the Alabama-Auburn uh, contests. It's the Iron Bowls, the, and it's maybe things that we don't remember, but they will each have a special memory about something that stood out to them about this particular contest. Damian, who was your favorite player when you were growing up uh, at Alabama or Auburn? My favorite player was Reggie Slack. Uh, like I said, the first time I turned the TV on, I was looking at an Auburn-Alabama game, and then I made my decision right then. I was going to Auburn, and I was going to be a quarterback. I never played any organized football, and my mom wouldn't let me play into the eighth grade, but I had it stuck in my mind I was going to go to Auburn and be a quarterback. All right, you got to realize his dream, and that's what it's all about, and it's also all about having fun leading up to the kickoff, and there's no shortage of that on the Auburn University campus. Let's check in now with Kimberly Curran. It's awesome! I love it! Yeah! Boy, oh! Ah! Now tell me, what's your favorite part of Iron Bowl 2003? Tailgating, yeah! <laughs> it's all about the tailgating and the rivalry. Tell us uh, how it's all going out here. Oh, it's going great. You know, we're just psyched to get to see Alabama come in here and send them home with a loss. Yeah! What's that? What's your prediction for tomorrow? Uh, 48 nothing because Bama sucks. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, back to you guys. <laughs> back to you guys. <laughs> All right, thanks, Kimberly. I, you think it's tough on the field? Get out there with some of those fans. I had a chance to um, celebrate with them after the Alabama game. It was um, 97 season, and I had a great time. My money's on the dog. <laughs> All right. You know, speaking of predictions, it's a da dangerous occupation in our business when you have to go out on the limb and, and select who do you think is going to win the game. And I think people who follow my track record can't wait till I make my prediction so they can go the other way <laughs> because it's it's a tough game to pick. But we're going to we're going to go out on the limb when we come back and close out this Iron Bowl preview. But first, this. <laughs> In a perfect world, you'd have the power to instantly reverse misfortune when it strikes. Mom. Yes, sweetie? I crashed Dad's car into the garage. No, you didn't. I didn't? In the real world, you have Alpha Insurance. You crashed the car into the garage. Call Alpha. Fast, fair service, friendly people. Awesome. Through Sunday, buy at Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate only at Chris Myers Auto Mall, your Yukon and Envoy headquarters. Our lot is loaded with the best selection of the year. Buy every 04 Pontiac GMC truck and SUV at Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate. Over 250 GMC trucks at Dealer Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate. Choose from Yukons, Envoy, Sierra pickups, Grand Ams, and more. All ready for immediate disposal. Buy at Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate. Sale in Sunday only at your Yukon and Envoy headquarters. Chris Myers Auto Mall. We've got it all. Starting at 70 bucks, you'll find our shoes fit your budget almost as well as your feet. Styles from dress to casual, sizes from 8.5 to 14. Men's Warehouse. You're going to like the way you look. I guarantee it. I'm Jim McAleer. To know you're getting the best price on quality office furniture, home office furniture, systems furniture, and home entertainment centers, see us first or see us last. Just be sure to see us. McAleer's. Mobile and Pensacola. Enjoying our Iron Bowl 2003 preview down at 
WKRG News 5 along the uh, Alabama, Mississippi, and Florida coast and here in Tiger Country on WRBL. Well, it's time to lay it on the line and talk about who we think will win the big game. You know, Damian and Jack, it seems to me in, in, in watching these games over the years, it doesn't take long, maybe four, five, six minutes into the ball game when you find out which team came to play because it, it seems that that's about the, the time you just say, hey, somebody's in trouble. Yeah, right. I, um, I was concerned about uh, how the guys would come out and play this week because there's a lot of talk about Coach Tuberville's job. But I talked to Coach Joe Witt today, and he assured me everybody was ready. And But he's always fired up about the Auburn-Alabama game, so I got to go with Auburn. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you think Joe Witt would tell you they weren't ready if they weren't? Or I, I, I can tell you right now. I can't <laughs> tell you what he said on the air, but I, 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 can, I can tell you they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the score going to be, Damian? What do you think? I'm thinking um, I think it's going to be one of the better games in Ar Auburn, Alabama history, uh, and I think it's going to be a close game, maybe 21-20, uh, maybe score like that. 21-20, Auburn. All right, Jack, what do you think? I I'm going to go with a little more scoring than that, but I'm going to have to lean Alabama's way, only because uh, Auburn's secondary has been shown to, to let their opponents stretch the field from time to time. And even if the Auburn running backs have a good game and, and do like everybody expects them to do when they touch the ball, Auburn's going to put some points on the board. But if the Tigers come out flat at all and the Tide decides they want to throw the ball long and try to get that uh, that air attack going, then Auburn's going to be in for a long afternoon. I'm going to go 34-28 uh, Alabama. Well, when I'm calculating the score in my mind on my prediction, I'm trying to figure out to make sure that you don't add in field goals because because Auburn has had a tough time with the kicking game and not much confidence with the kicking game when Coach uh, Tuberville in the, uh, what, uh 11th, 12th game of the season saying, uh, I'm not sure who's going to kick this week. So that's problems right there. But I still think Auburn's going to win the game. They're seven, seven and a half point favorites. Those guys in Las Vegas know what they're doing. They make a lot of money doing what they do. I think Auburn's going to win it, but I don't think they're going to cover the spread. I think it's going to be something like 28, 24 Auburn Tigers. A little bit of incentive for Auburn. They've got to win this to be bowl eligible. So that's something that's got to stick in the back of their minds. All right. And not exactly the bowl Auburn would be wanting to go to if they end up at the Liberty Bowl this year, huh? Well, we ended up at the Independence Bowl my uh, junior year in the uh, Peach Bowl my senior year and you're just happy to go anywhere. You still want to play football. It's a lot of fun. You, you're out for a week and also you get a little um, stipend of money, a little money to go out for the bowl game. So they'll be ready. So Shreveport, Shreveport's not a bad place to be in December then. Oh, I wouldn't want to go back. <laughs> <laughs> well, Damian Craig, thanks for, so much for joining us here on this Iron Bowl preview. Good luck to your uh, former team tomorrow night. And may the best team win. That's what we always hope for in the Iron Bowl, right, Jack? We sure do. It's going to be a good game regardless. All right. And, of course, we'll have uh, pregame and uh, postgame uh, highlights and coverage for you tomorrow on WKRG News 5 and WRBL. It's the 68th Iron Bowl, 647, the scheduled kickoff Saturday night, the game to be televised on ESPN. For Kimberly Kurth, Jack Rogers, Damian Craig, and our fine staff behind the scenes, we say a big War Eagle and Roll Tide from Auburn. Thanks for watching. Iron Bowl 2003, live from Auburn. Sponsored by Alpha Insurance, Chevrolet, and GMC Trucks. Through Sunday, buy at Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate only at Chris Myers Auto Mall, your Yukon and Envoy headquarters. Our lot is loaded with the best selection of the year. Buy every 04 Pontiac GMC truck and SUV at Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate. Over 250 GMC trucks at Dealer Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate. Choose from Yukons, Envoys, Sierra pickups, Grand Ams, and more. All ready for immediate disposal. Buy at Invoice. Plus, you keep the rebate. Sale in Sunday only at your Yukon and Envoy headquarters. Chris Myers Auto Mall. We've got it all. They changed the McNuggets, you know. <gasps> Why change with nuggets? Who changed the McNuggets? I love McNuggets. McNuggets don't need to be changed. You're gonna change something. Change broccoli. Change is good. McDonald's new chicken McNuggets are now made with white meat. Come on in, you'll love the change. <laughs> A different generation needs a different kind of denture adhesive. C-Bond is a thin wafer made from soft microfibers for comfort. And three adhesives for all day hold. No ooze or pasty mess. And a kind of hold and comfort you have to feel to believe. Oh, I just ain't the way they used to be, no, no. You don't live your grandmother's life. Why use her denture paste? C-Bond, a different generation.
140 horsepower engine and responsive handling, we put the fun back into the compact car, the Saturn Ion. Finance a new 2004 Saturn Ion 1 with air conditioning and CD player for $179 a month. See your retailer for details. News 5 is your weather authority.